Hi everyone, today I'm going to share with you some photo editing tips to help you come up with better layouts, make the best use of difficult selections of photo reference. I'm going to take you through some different examples using Photoshop for my demonstration, but the main tool that I use is pretty universal to most free softwares available too. So I'm going to show you some examples of where I've used uh, photo editing to make different groups of animals for group portraits and also where I've used it to change the background in a wildlife piece. So I hope that you enjoy this video. If you do, please do subscribe here on YouTube and also consider checking me out over on Patreon. So with this first example, one of my previous pet portraits. I hope that it really looks like the two dogs sat very still and perfectly for their portraits, but it really wasn't the case. I went to photograph this pair of rascals and it was very difficult in their large garden to get anywhere that they stayed still for more than uh, a millisecond. So out of these three shots, I figured I could create something using and combining these two images of the Black Spaniel. I had several shots as well of the two dogs beside each other, both standing and sitting, just not very well in focus because they're moving. But it also helped me later on when I'm trying to put the two together in the same portrait. But the first thing that I wanted to work on was to try and get the best view of the spaniel. In this one, I much prefer the view of the body. We're looking more head on, similar to the view that we're seeing of the Labrador. So I knew that these two bodies would work well side by side. But the face is definitely better in this one. And because we're sort of looking down at the dog, we get a very uh, odd foreshortened view of the body. But because uh, she was sort of tilting her head back towards me, and I thought that the head-on view here would work on this body. So to start playing around with that, I choose the Polygon Lasso tool. I've got a slight bit of feathering on just to soften the edges, but I'm never too worried if I'm neat with this. So just selecting roughly around the shape of the dog's head, leaving in a little bit of the neck hair, which will help me in placing it on the other body. So I want to copy that. I want to be sure that I've selected the correct layer and copy. Then I paste myself another version on top. That means I can lift it, bring it over and start playing with it over here. First thing I notice is it seems a little bit bigger. The eyes and the nose do seem a little bit bigger than on this face. So I can just transform this. I'm holding the shift key while I make this smaller so it keeps the proportions correct. So it's a different view of the face so it's tricky to judge whether it's the same size and I use a couple of different tips for that. I'm just having a look at the outline along the top of the head there as I bring this up over the top of it. I'm also looking at the chest hair down here. When I think I've got it roughly in place, I can go over here to the layer and just disappear that one for a second and start to see how that looks. And that's really how I judge it by eye. So when I've got this dog roughly pieced together now, I just want to merge these two layers together so that this is all one piece again. And then I'm just going to quickly select around this dog. And once I copy that, I can paste the whole dog into a new file. And I've done the same with the black Labrador here. I've got him as an extra.
and I just bring him in as well. So now I've got both dogs, and as I said before, I had a lot of photo reference of the two dogs together in the garden. And at this point then I start playing with their skill, where I want to position them within the painting. Um, because the light source was coming from the right side of both dogs, these two photo references work together. And I decided in the end to place the spaniel just a little bit in front of the black Labrador so that we've still got the light heading the side of that dog. So that was how I came up with the layout to this piece. And at this point I would have also dropped in some of the other shots that I took from their garden that day. It was a beautiful misty morning and that's what inspired me to come up with this very simple background to set off the two dark coloured animals. Another example of this in a pet portrait, which was a complicated one for me. I went to photograph all three animals and I based it around this one part of the living room. So this was the finished portrait, but that was pieced together from uh, several different photos. Nobody was willing to comply that day. But eventually it did get a selection of photos that I thought could be pieced together. As long as you're using the same area and as long as you're taking everything from the same eye level, then it's surprising what you can do later on with Photoshop to piece something together. In Photoshop, this was the, the messy layout that I came up with. And I knew from having lots of different shots where I could see, for example, the cushion, how the rest of the sofa looked. I had some shots of just the sofa itself. So I had many shots to work with to piece this together. So this was the messy layout, which I used then to paint from. Uh, of course, when I would be working on parts of the edges of the dogs, I would refer back to the original photo reference of that dog just to get the details around the edges because you can see that I'm quite rough and messy with the Photoshop part, but it's really just for me to get a sense of everyone's skill and make sure that when I grade it up for my painting that I've got the proportions all correct. And another tip for combining lots of photo reference, especially if you're lucky enough to have the photos all taken in the same lighting. Just make sure that you bring the colour harmony throughout the whole piece, so all the colours used in the background, in the glow of the walls, also used in the dogs, uh, their warmer tones, so the, the same colours are used throughout the painting and in the three animals, so many common colours tying it all together. So another piece that I wanted to talk about was one of my wildlife pieces. I was a bit more experimental with this one on the background. And just to show you the photo reference that I worked from, this was my photo reference of the red deer. This is our man here. And then for the background, it started off with this very simple colourful leafed bush in my friend's garden. And I had the long lens on and loved the colours that were shining down through the sunlit leaves. So with the long lens, it's a 70 to 200 millimetre Canon lens. And it started to turn it into this. And then even further into this, where you start to get a lovely uh, bouquet effect. And recently there was a comment on one of my videos about me using the Photoshop blur effect which you can find in the filters of course you're never going to get as good a blur or as as good a bokeh as you do with an actual lens so if you have access to nice lenses get out there and uh, snap some shots in out of focus as they come in really useful for backgrounds the only time i would really use the photoshop blur is when i'm really struggling with older photo reference uh, trying to make the best of what I've got. So with this piece, I just loved the, the colour of this and how almost abstract it could feel. And I had been working on square format for a stag series, so just by cropping this roughly into square shape. And then just like earlier, I've used my Polygon Lasso tool, this tool again, it's so useful. If you can get used to this tool, 
Uh, and it's not just on Photoshop, you'll find it on many free softwares as well. It's not an unusual thing, but it's certainly very useful. So again, I've just selected around the deer himself. And when I bring him over to my layout, so this is roughly what I would have done just when trying to come up with a layout for my piece. And you still have to use a lot of imagination. It, it doesn't quite look like the painting, but you can see where it's useful to play about with uh, the scale of the, the deer, where you might want to place him. It gives you all of those quick editing tools to play about with layouts. Old school way, of course, is to sit and sketch out mini layouts. I'm too lazy for that, so I use Photoshop for a lot of my editing. The main thing that I will say, as I mentioned in the previous portrait, is to try and unify all of your colours. So many of the colours that I've used throughout the coat are the same colours that I've used, those vibrant shades that I've chosen for the background. So as long as you tie in a lot of the colour in your background, into your main subject, you're going to uh, create the same lighting effect across the whole piece. So on the same kind of theme as that last piece, I did the same here with this giant 40 inch painting. And each one of these deer were taken from individual photos, then put over a background photograph that I took. And this was the Photoshop cut and paste job that I came up with, just enough to give me the scale of the animals, but also certain things that I'd like to point out in choosing the photo reference, really trying to think of the surroundings. So the animals are mostly all under uh, some shade being cast by the tree. This one in particular in the background, if you recognize him from earlier, he's the back deer in the group. And he's completely in shadow, which works really well because he's hidden back in under the canopy of the trees a bit more. This guy who's got more light hitting him in the real centerpiece, uh, I allowed him to be out from under the tree a little more so that it makes sense that he's getting hit by the light. Obviously, all three of these deer getting hit by some light coming from the right hand side. So lots of logistical things to think about when you're trying to piece something like this together. But I certainly find Photoshop really helpful when coming up with the initial layout, helping me get my drawing on the board and my proportions good before I start. So that's just some of my best tips for using Photoshop to edit your photo reference. Because if you've ever worked with animals or even children, you'll know that you don't always get the best shot to make the best painting. But with these tools, you can edit. Hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, thanks for watching.